Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gospelicious Radio, episode 38. 38. Or, we're going to say, uh, we're going to uh, do a, um, a tribute episode. Tribute episode. A to... tribute episode to episode one. Because yeah. guys, yeah. check out our mic setup. Yeah, we got our fancy mic yeah. setup. This is what happens when your other mics don't work. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. You come back to the little USB mic, that we're, the humble stuff. I don't even you know, know if, they, if you're watching the video. I'm not even sure you can actually see it. I know. I can kind it of pick behind, it up here. You know what I mean? Like, here we go. You can is. see it. There you yeah. go. You see it. I apologize right for any noise that you hear. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to adjust it a yeah, millimeter. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There we go. All right. Beautiful. Um, yeah, we're back to our old audio setup. Oh, uh, yeah. How does it feel to be back in uh, January 2019? <laughs> I know, right. When we first started. I know. Yeah. With a little. With a, I, I, and when we started, I had two USB mics. But then I realized I couldn't use them both at the same time because I wanted one for you, one for me, and it just didn't. And then it just wouldn't work with the setup that we have here. We need, we need, we need a new setup. You know, we need hey, something. We do. You know, we do. You know, and at some uh, point, you know, you know what? what? We're gonna work at it. We're because, gonna work at it. Slow but sure. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm in it for the long haul, I'm man. In it for the long haul too. The long I haul. enjoy it. Gr. <laughs> I know. GR forever. I know. Amen. And here EVA. we are. Absolutely. Yeah. And here we, normally, normally we're I'm here. I'm gonna carve in the tree. Absolutely. <laughs> GR forever. GR. Forever. With a heart, with an yeah. arrow through it. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. That's awesome. And uh, no, but the, but yeah, you know, but but you know, it's like you know, it's one of these things. Normally, we're out at our uh, our normal. Uh, Crack of dawn hour, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, but tonight we're we're we're, here. We're, we're at the other crack. We're at the other crack. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if that's. <laughs> uh, what I meant was what I meant was uh, we're uh, at the other ex- <laughs> the other end of the day. We are at night. Yes, we are at night. We're on a Wednesday night. Wednesday night after uh, a yeah. long day of work and yeah. after uh, clubs, clubs and yeah. prayer meeting and all this stuff that this we do. This is what we do, this people. This is what we do. This is what we do after a nice long day. Yes. Full day of work. Absolutely. Full night of ministry. Right. Amen. The day continues, my friend. The day continues. With a good old episode. You know? A good old morsel. Morsel. A nice a morsel is a good a one. A nice of gospel full sandwich. That's right. Of gospel delicious radio. radio. I'm talking full on bologna and cheese, bro. Oh yes. You know what I'm talking about? A little bit of mayo. A little, a little, bit, of, a little, little bit of mayo. That's just yeah. a smidge. <laughs> A little bit of mayo. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. I enjoy it. A little bit of pepper. Creamy zip of Miracle Whip. (laughs) That's right. right. Is that what it was? Is is that something like that? I don't know. Bring me up a piece of that. (laughs) Mayonnaise. (laughs) Mayonnaise. That's right. You know. But uh, we we love GR. We love Gospelicious. And uh, we're doing this for you guys. Mm. uh, And. uh, but yeah, feel free. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to say feel free to help support the pod. Yep. We uh, we're, we're talking about our technology failing. Uh, yeah. Uh, feel free to, to buy some merch and yeah, uh, you and know, help us out. It'll, it'll help support the pod. And As you can see, I know we're gonna talk, probably talk about it at the end. Brother Adam's already wearing his Gospelicious shirt. Hey-o. I have mine still right here, and uh, and they can I be do. ordered any size, actually any color. As a matter of fact, from Ooh. what uh, from what has been said. So you ladies, if you'd like to get a, a pink Gospelicious shirt or Yes. You know, uh, whatever. You know yes. what I mean? That different shirt styles are available, styles, I think, too, as well. We can do that, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and of course, we have other things, uh, you know, stickers and, and whatnot. And, and uh, we'll coasters. And, coasters. And, uh, and yeah. We'll work on some other stuff in the yeah, future, too. Of course. You know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. But yeah, uh, so this is episode 38. We are trying to spread the Ooh. gospel of Jesus Christ one podcast at a time. And uh, we can't do it alone. No. Nope. We need your help. Amen. We need your help. This is a team effort, man. Yes, it is. Yes, it and, certainly uh, is, brother. Unlike your brothers, who are phantom producers. I know. We we, we I don't even know why we put them yeah. as producers. We're gonna on take there. them think, off. I yeah, think. we're gonna take them off there yeah. because I don't think that they're really you since know, like episode two or three. They were like they they were see ya. They were like yeah, you know, it's peace. Like, I'm like, out of here. Yeah, and we're <laughs> blaming you guys if you guys watch this. They probably don't even watch it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, a bunch of bums. Uh, bums. You know what I mean? We're calling, calling you out. You know, calling you out. Here, yeah. You know. Yeah. I, we can call him that. You know what I mean? We still love him. I love you, guys. <laughs> That's right. We still love you. We still love, we still love you. you. We yeah. still love you. You can always come back and be a producer. Much love. Much love. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. You can, say, yeah, you can tell that we're recording late. So, yeah. You know, yeah. that's good. Amen. Uh, but mm. uh, we got an interesting discussion I want to mm. get into tonight. Um, yeah. You brought this idea up uh, recently. Yeah. And I uh, thought we'll tackle it tonight. Sure. Uh, you want to talk about um, the Reformation? Yeah. Um, 
Specifically because uh, and, it, are, yeah. you like that random segue. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Reformation. Good. You want to talk about? Yeah. Speaking you know, of your brothers, let's talk Reformation. Yeah, you know yeah. it's you know like you know Martin Luther. You know, use the hammer on the door of the chapel yeah. there. I want to use a hammer on my brothers' heads. You know what I mean? Sometimes. You know what I mean? That's a good segue. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty harsh. That's well. Hey. Wow. Hey. hey, hey you know. I. I could. Well, I do not condone least, violence. At, uh, at least on their finger. Come on. You know what I mean. Maybe okay. on their toe. You no. know what I mean. That's right. Maybe not on their head. You know what I mean. Mel That's Gibson right. style. Mel Gibson. In yeah. payback. Yeah. There you, you know? go. No? Yes. I think it was payback. Yeah. yeah that was right. That's right. But no. Anyway, um, last. Uh, last uh, Thursday was uh, the thirty first of October, and uh, that is generally, uh, obviously, in American culture, we celebrate Halloween. Uh, but something very, very important happened on that day in church history, and that was the day that Martin Luther uh, nailed the, the 95 Thesis uh, to the door of the chapel in Wittenberg, uh, Germany, uh, essentially sparking the, uh, the Protestant Reformation. Uh, he, he broke off. Uh, he was a German monk, German priest, um, Catholic, and... Uh, went and studied the Word of God, and specifically Galatians, but the entirety of Scripture, and um, came to uh, the knowledge of what we now call justification by faith alone, and uh, essentially the... The, the, uh, the, um, the five solas? Is the, that, well, that, that came later, that came but later? yeah, okay. absolutely, but, but essentially the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that it is not by works... Uh, what was going on at the time that, that kind of made Luther really, I guess you could say, really vehement uh, against and angry, because he was an angry German, against the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, Roman Catholic Church at the time was, was uh, specifically the, the, the church, the Catholic Church was trying to build uh, St. Peter's Basilica at the time, and um, <clears throat> the, the residence of the Pope, which is still there. It's the, it's the headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church, but at the time they were trying to raise funds to build it. And so what they would do is that they would manipulate their, their doctrines and manipulate the, uh, specifically, uh, you know, the, the viewpoint of heaven with, uh, with the, the peasant people. Um, who wanted so badly to go to heaven, and specifically for their relatives to go to heaven, and so what they would their do, loved ones, right? their loved ones, um, and um, and so what the church was doing at the time, and this is among many things, is that uh, they basically were selling what were called uh, papal bulls um, in order to uh, basically just to just simplify it down, is that if you bought this little piece of paper that was signed by the pope or by one of the higher up priests that and if you bought enough of them, that uh, that you could save your uh, your relatives uh, from uh, again another made up Catholic doctrine, purgatory, uh, which is that intermediate state between heaven and hell. And uh, if you bought enough of them, that uh, that you would uh, that they would go to heaven. Um, <laughs> matter of fact, uh, the common phrase uh, at the time uh, was, uh, "Whenever a, a coin in the coffer rings, uh, a soul from purgatory springs." Is what it was is is what was said at the time, and uh, and so uh, Luther, of course, um, he uh, you know through a whole series of events, uh, obviously uh, culminating uh, in the ninety five thesis, uh, you know made this protest against the Roman Catholic Church, and basically said no salvation is by grace alone through faith alone, uh, in Christ alone, which is again it, it's those are three of the the uh, the uh, the five solas. I mean, of course, we believe in sola scriptura, which was another major uh, change that uh, and something that that Luther himself was fighting for, because uh, you know he's he's said oh, over and over again that you know our authority is scripture, not not the traditions of man, not some guy in a funny hat in in Rome, um, and so scripture itself, and uh, and so as a result of that, <clears throat> what ended up happening was, is you had. Um, you know, he, he obviously, they didn't take very well to that, uh, the, the Catholic Church, which was very much integrated in uh, into the politics of the day. They had uh, great, uh, you know, um, I mean, almost they, they had just great influence on the rulers of the day. And um, and so Luther, uh, there was, there was um, uh, essentially a... Um, uh, a court session for him, a hearing for him, uh, called the uh, normally it's called the Diet of Worms, um, and uh, in Worms, Germany, and uh, where he was asked to recant 
uh, his teachings and his books at the time. Another thing that was going on is the printing press was becoming a, a very uh, common commonplace thing. So Luther's books were able to get out into the hands of people really, really quick. So that's what spread this a lot quicker. To which Luther, when he was put on trial, basically said, no, I won't recant. You know, and he's famous for saying, uh, here I stand, I can do no other, God help me. And uh, that's one of his famous sayings. And uh, and from there, uh, the Catholic Church uh, put a bounty on his head, and he disappeared, and he ended up going to the uh, the Vortburg, um, uh, uh, it's not Vortburg, um, castle at, uh, no, I think it is the castle at Vortburg, May, correct me if I'm wrong, um, and uh, <coughs> where he went by the name, the, uh, the name of Junker George for, uh, for many a year, while he translated, uh, while he was on the run from the Catholic Church, of course, they threatened to kill him, they, they, you know, uh, and have him stand trial again for, uh, heresies against the Church, and during that time, while he was in the castle, he translated the, the, uh, the scriptures from, uh, the dead language of Latin, which was the only translation of the scriptures at the time, uh, to German, which was the language of the common man, because he believed so so much in um, the uh, the authority of Scripture that he wanted to get a copy of the Scripture <clears throat> into uh, into everyone's hand. He wasn't the first one to try and do this. It was Tyndale and others that that tried to do this, but Luther was the first one that was really successful. I mean, on a major scale, and um, and it was it was because of that, uh, you know, uh, that guy, you know, that little German guy angry German guy uh, that God used uh, to spark uh, the Protestant Reformation and then through a whole series of history over hundreds of years, um, here we are today, you know, in a Protestant Reformed, uh, and we do fall into the Reform category. I know some folks don't like that term, but I don't really care, um, you know, because it's true. Uh, we, we are a Protestant Reformed, non-Catholic, um, Baptist Christian church and uh, that's where we that's where we wind up today and so yeah man when you when you think about you know just thinking about the history of it like mm. when you think about the church at that time having the authority to put a bounty oh yeah right on someone's head right that is ridiculous I know when you think about that that kind of power yeah uh, and manipulation in manipulation, the name of Jesus right Right. right. That, that a church right. would put out a bounty on someone. Mm. Mm. Uh, it kind of just defies all reason, doesn't it? It defies all logic. Well, it, I mean, de it defies it defies scripture. Defies I mean, everything, it defies everything. Yeah. It defies the entire yeah. thing. And um which is so amazing about the Protestant Reformation. I am a I am a huge student of of uh that particular era of church history. Uh I find it inspiring. Um why the, the the sacrifices that these men had to make, um, the the and I think about the small sacrifices that I make, and I think to myself, you know, I I have a right to I have absolutely no right to complain about where I'm at today, where I can preach the word of God freely yeah. in a church with people who love me, and uh, not and have live to run comfortably. Your life yeah, live comfortably. Yeah. I don't have to worry about any of these things, and and yet this guy, this Luther, and others, by the way were willing to literally be put their lives on the line to make sure that we... Uh, I know our little thing changed back there. I know. We're having technical difficulties. Oh, there we go. Good. And, uh, <laughs> gotcha. But, but, that these, but the, these guys, you know what I'm saying, that these guys would... To make sure that we had a Bible in our hands. That's huge. So that we didn't have yeah. to rely upon some priest. We don't have to rely upon some guy in a hat, like I said, that's, that's trying to sell us salvation. As if you could do that. You Extorting know I mean? you. Yeah. yeah, distorted view of scripture and all these other things. But no, I can open up this book for myself and I can and I can read of God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone on my own. And uh, it's just absolutely amazing. I find it I find it inspiring. Um, Luther especially. And uh, that's why I think it's a, a really uh, important thing for the church to, to set on their calendar and think about um uh, especially a Bible-believing church like ours that that um, that uh, holds the Bible as its ultimate authority, there were men who laid down their lives literally for uh, for for uh, so that you could have uh, that book in your hand today, and so that you could study it, and so that you could know that salvation is is uh, is so free. 
And so, yeah. I don't it's, know if it's, that it's, yeah. it's kind of a marvel when you think yeah. about the kind of faith that it takes to put everything on the line. Right. You to, know, I know for a fact I've never faced anything like oh, that. Oh, me neither. Me neither. And I don't know if I ever really will. I mean, yeah. you know, God forbid. I mean, you never know. But, you never I mean, know. I mean, at least yet in my life, I'm 36 years old. Well, yeah. I've never faced anything close to that. What, like literal death for Your life for and death. The gospel. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, for the uh, sake of the gospel, for the sake of the for the furthering of God's kingdom. I mean, absolutely. When and, you when you c- see such a clear wrong being right. done. Mm-hmm. Um. And not only just on a small, on a, on a large scale. Right. Like a complete yeah. world-altering scale. Right. We're ta- it's like literally the future of, of at that point, the, of that religion right. was in the balance. Was, was in the balance of it. And, and it has, ever since the Protestant Reformation, I mean, it has never, I mean... It's never been the same. It's never been the same, ever. Yeah. I mean, it rocked the world. Yeah, there was, it, was no really going did. back. There is that. none. Yeah. And there is no going back. As much as you will have those who try to uh, unite the Protestant... There was actually a couple years ago, there was uh, the Pope, uh, the current Pope, and they've done this forever. They did it under uh, John Paul II. They did it under Benedict. They've done it under uh, Francis now. Um, But uh, to try and bring the Lutherans um, and uh, the Protestants together with the Catholics to try and, you know, bring the the church together. But you're not going back. I mean, a church like ours is, I mean, we, you know, we are not going to unite with, uh, you know, the false teaching of Roman Catholic Church. I will say this, that I think that individual Catholics can be saved, okay? Mm. I, I'm going to say that. Um, I think I've met saved Catholics who believe in grace alone, through faith alone. They just simply follow the tradition. I think they're in the, the wrong church. Uh, they're not going to be fed the Word of God. So don't hear me saying that I, you know, just because I reject the system um, as heresy and as false teaching doesn't mean that I think that everybody who adheres to it is not saved. I don't want people to think that. But there is a reason why we are Protestant. And there is a reason why we are, uh, that we, uh, uh, that we believe the things that we do. And it's namely because of the scriptures that we hold in our hand that is as a result of what happened 500 years ago. And, um, you know, 502 or 503 years ago, because it was, um, it was, uh, it was 1517. It was October, October, uh, 31st, 1517. We, we celebrated 500 years just a couple years ago. And, uh, yeah, so that would be 502 years now and, wow. um, since this happened. Hmm. and um, It's hard to believe because when you think about the grand scheme of time, 500 years is not a long time. <laughs> you know? No, it's not. not, no, to, th- not. to think that in the grand scheme this happened so so uh so few years ago right. really when you think about it right and we're, we're, we're at talking the about five centuries it's... And, and and bearing in mind that the church itself again it was legalized in in the 300s okay i mean like the church of course was started at zero i mean of course but right the um you know but then but then it was legalized at 300 and then for basically a thousand years 1100 years it it you know ever since it's you know uh, enlightenment ever since it's uh legalization you know what i mean and and acceptance into the culture that it had such a a, a degrading it that, that the theology of of the church that that uh it just degraded yeah. so far because of uh its sophistication into the culture this the respect that we get from the culture around us that you literally had a you know a pope yeah. that had like you said before, the ability to literally call for the death of some dissenter, some little German dissenter. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That's all he was at the time. And um, and so it's an amazing thing. The church itself almost became a dictatorship. Right. You know? and, um, uh, and, and, and I know we live in a time where it's like, well, you know, yeah, we say that these things couldn't happen again. I mean, they could. I mean, very uh, well could. Very well could. Yeah. I mean, because it has been such a well, short we, period We of time. see hints of it around the world, mm-hmm. even today. I mean, there are mm-hmm. other countries where things like this are still happening. Right. But I mean, I, I'm just always impressed by by just the impact that, that Luther had. Yeah. And um, Luther, uh, of course, I mean, since then, I mean, the, some of the greatest theologians of all time came as a result of that. Uh, about 100 years later, John Calvin would, would come and write one of the one of the greatest commentary sets of all time, um, you know, which is right behind you right there. And... Um, you know, and, uh, you know, and again, you can criticize any of these people. So again, please, you know, uh, but John Calvin, there is bar none. He was, he was, 
one of, if not the greatest theologian of the last 500 years. Um, and that has nothing to do with Calvinism. That has to that has a lot to do with with just the way that he exegetes Scripture and the way that he brings out um, the text of Scripture. Very Many insightful. The, very very insightful. Uh, all the way to, you know, another, uh, you know, and then I'm just, I'm, I'm not miss I'm just naming all of the sure. highlights, but I mean, there were so many others and then, and then you end up having, um, yeah, this is, this is just more of an overview. Right. Yeah. And then, and then in, uh, and then, uh, as a result of that in, in the, you know, 16, 1700s, you have the whole Puritan movement that, uh, mm-hmm. and which affected, you know, again, the church of England, which was a Protestant, uh, you know, church again, that got so involved in politics uh, not Catholic or anything like that, but again, so involved in, in in politics that you have this whole group that moves to the the Americas, that um, you know again essentially is is striving to fight for religious freedom. Yeah. This is what the Puritans were. Um, they they wanted a pure religion. They wanted not a state run religion. Uh, they wanted uh, they didn't want the Pope or the Church of England or some king telling them what to believe. Or how to believe, because again, as soon as the church gets so involved with politics, it's a lesson for today, by the way, uh, that all of a sudden the the church can be manipulated. I know. Yeah, he see, he knows. <laughs> he, I I know. You know. We I, talked we, about this. We have a couple episodes ago. We I did. Yeah. yeah. And so during that time, during the Puritan era in the 1600s, and then into the early 1700s, um, you had one other person that was highly influenced by the Protestant Reformation. Besides, later on, and you know, guys like. You know Spurgeon, who came in the eighteen hundreds, and then Deal Moody and some of these other guys. But in that 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 period in between, before the United States was even a thing, during the the, the colony era, you know of the of the United States, uh, there was another man who had a, a huge impact as a result of the Protestant Reformation uh, by the name of Jonathan Edwards, and he's another one of my heroes. And um, he's a local boy, uh, right here from right here in Connecticut, as a matter of fact. He was born just up the road in um, in uh, what is now South Windsor, but it was East Windsor at the time, right along the Connecticut River. And uh, his father, Timothy Edwards, uh, was a pastor there. His church building is still there. Uh, you can actually drive up there, and you can see all the old uh, the old graves and everything else where Timothy is actually buried next to his wife, Edwards' mother, and um, and uh, and. Uh, and so Edwards, Edwards grew up, um, you know, under this this teaching that it's salvation by grace alone through faith alone, the authority of the scriptures. Uh, Edwards himself was was a uh, was a genius. I mean, he was a prodigy child uh, for his day. Um, he uh, he he graduated uh, college at like you know I, I think it was correct me if I'm wrong, folks, but I mean it was like 18 years old. I mean just Yale and the whole nine yards became a preacher during that time and um uh most famously of course um uh preaching uh, a sermon that uh that we all know as uh, sinners in the hands of an angry god which is that's what he's mostly known for but he has written so many other um amazingly deep and powerful works besides that uh, things that things that just uh, they will blow your mind as a Christian. Matter of fact, sitting right at my desk in front of us, I know uh, you know weekly we have these books sitting up here. Right here in the middle is actually my, one of my favorite books by him, and that is uh, one of the most impactful books in my entire life. And that is uh, the book Religious Affections. Uh, that's the NIV version of it. That simplifies it for a dummy like me. But the uh, I call it the NIV version. It's just a it's, it's a it's a modern digest. English yeah. version. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's and it's amazing about how our our affections should be uh, in in regard to uh, to Jesus Christ and what He's done for us and and balancing that out with uh, what we do as Christians and um, uh, what thought our thought versus actions. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And. Um, which kind of brings us, I know, kind of full circle here to, uh, you know, I mean, we talked a lot about Luther, um, and, uh, you know, and I could spend the whole time talking about Luther, but, uh, again, you know, the effects of the Reformation and what they had on other people, and and, um, and uh, one of them, of course, being Jonathan Edwards, and uh, this, this tremendous man that was used to usher in the the first great awakening in the in the United States where the gospel was was preached actually it was a, it, it ended up you know uh, it it was because of of Jonathan Edwards uh, preaching that uh, so many came to Christ and then churches started to pop up you'd have the Congregational Church 
churches that like Edwards was a uh, pastor of that would pop up and then the Baptists would, would pop up soon thereafter. And as a matter of fact, uh, Edwards was, uh, he, he, he lived in the early 1700s and the 1720s, 1730s. I think he died in 17, 1750s, I think is where he, is where he died. Our church started just to give you perspective in 1793 and the congregational church up the road, I believe started in, uh, like 1760. So it would have been directly, our church and the Congregational Church, our sister church, would have probably had a, being so close in this area, had a direct, almost directly impacted, uh, maybe, you know, maybe in a more roundabout way, but, but almost directly impacted by Jonathan Edwards, uh, his theology, and then him being influenced by the Puritans who were influenced by Martin Luther. This is why it's so important for us to study history and to look back upon the things uh, and the thoughts of people and saints that have gone on before us, Christians who have gone on before us, that we can learn from and we can grow from. And um, I know I'm going on. I'm Please, just going no. on and on and on, you know, but, um, and uh, and I could it's all It's fascinating night. when you think about that, the, the the direct influence when you think about just the, right. the varying degrees and stages as we go back mm. in time to Martin Luther and then, you know, uh, from... You know, the, where we are now, right? And uh, as a result of that, that's pretty mind blowing. We think it about. is, and and it's it's something to be thankful for, and um, and it's something to grow from as a result. I, I think, and and um, matter of fact, my first exposure to the Reformation. That's part of the reason why I'm bringing up Edwards more than I am Luther. Mm. Okay, I have a high regard for Luther, very much so. I got my little Luther plushie over there. Uh, you know, sitting up there on the next to oh, my, go, my yeah. oh yeah, you know. I have a very high regard for for uh, yeah. You can pull him down if you want, you know. And uh, there's a little there's a little picture frame there next to him. But yeah, you can yeah you can bring Martin Luther down there. There he is. Hey, put him down there in the front. Yeah, let him let him sit out here. Let so, him breathe. That's right. He's got a little dust on him. But there you go, buddy. <coughs> but yeah, um, that was to celebrate the 500th anniversary of uh, of the Reformation. Uh, Sarah got that for me. <coughs> nice. um, but my first exposure to Reformation theology was not Martin Luther. Uh, it was Jonathan Edwards, and that's why I want to bring him up. And my first exposure to Jonathan Edwards was reading what I what I want to kind of go through a little bit tonight, yeah. Um, which is the uh, his seventy resolutions. Um, Jonathan Edwards, in his late teens, um, when he was a young man before he was married, um, wrote out uh, a set of resolutions. A lot of times we think about resolutions as you know something we do at you know we're coming up on January we want to you know uh, right like goals yeah or goals like life. Uh, aspirations or yeah something. you know and 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 i gotta say that my own resolutions the past few years and almost always tend to be pretty pathetic oh yeah you know things yeah. like things like I, I you know i want i'm gonna i'm gonna lose weight this year eat I'm less go burgers eat less burgers yeah and then i know? immediately eat a and burger then i immediately eat a burger <laughs> yeah. and you know yeah or two or two or three you know that's how i work or three. You know? yeah. yeah doubles Depend yeah doubles <laughs> you know what i mean that's how i do it you know but with cake but, no but but what amazed me when i read this was I read it about the same age? I was like eighteen or nineteen. That was my first exposure to this. I was in uh, I was in Bible college at the time. Okay. And uh, and uh, it just always was was so impactful um, because I was always taken aback by the um, the fact that this young man wrote out these seventy resolutions, and they were all they were all written at different times. I mean, okay, they so actually spread out. It was spread out over time. How old was he when he started it? You know, or was he? I think he was like eighteen. So he was young. He was, he was young. Okay. He was a young man. That's what you said. That. And okay. um, but he started and, this when he was young. And I think it was between. Se it was like a one year period. So oh, I mean, so it was, he was okay. He, yeah, it was. So he was seventeen, the, eighteen. The entirety of them were written when he was young. Yeah, the, the whole thing was wow. written when okay. he was a young man. And um, matter of fact, it, I hold it so close to my heart that uh, I mean, uh, you know, Adam can see it over here, but it's it hanging in my office. Yeah. Um, right somebody, away. somebody got that for me as a framed, uh, uh, a picture frame of, uh, all of the resolutions of Jonathan Edwards because, uh, it just had such an impact on, on my life. But, um, <clears throat> but, uh, I think yeah, that you, you, you could definitely spend a minute reading that. Oh yeah. I mean, cause there's 70 of them and <laughs> yeah, they're, all, they're, they're all, they're all, they're, they're all like written. a sentence or two long a yeah. piece. Looks like with, uh, there's scripture references too. Some of them have yeah, scripture references. Yeah, like Some of them have the dates when he wrote them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, that's neat. And so yeah, 
And so they had such an impact on my life. I mean, I began when I was a young man writing writing my own set of resolutions, which I keep personal. And mm -hmm. um, I could not have uh, done it in one year, uh, for sure. Uh, you know, I'm still writing my own resolutions after 10 years, you know what I mean? You know, after, after doing all this, because I... I'm an idiot compared to Jonathan Edwards in a lot of ways, you know what I mean? And uh, Although I will say this, Jonathan Edwards, uh, he did die early. I mean, he died in his uh, early 50s. And uh, genius, again, because, uh, you know, he was a pastor, theologian, and a missionary. He, he, he served with David Brainerd up in, uh, who was uh, up in Massachusetts sharing the gospel after he was kicked out of his church for, uh, for uh, disagreements over uh, the Lord's Supper and who could partake and who couldn't. Um, he went with, with David Brainerd to share the gospel with the Indians up in, um, indigenous folks up in, uh, up in Massachusetts, Northampton, that way, up, up further in Northampton, uh, cause he was in Northampton preaching. Um, but, uh, then, um, he ended up being elected the president of Princeton University, uh, in New Jersey. And, uh, he ended up going down there and, uh, because he was such a mind, um, he was also a scientist, and so at the time there was, um, I forget which disease it was, I don't know if it was, uh, I don't think it was, uh, I, I think it was smallpox or something like that, but he, uh, they asked him to basically, uh, and again, I'm really putting this in, in, you know, the Reader's Digest version here, but uh, basically to come up with a vaccine for it, which he tested on himself, and uh, he ended up dying of it. As a matter of fact, because because he didn't want to test it on anybody else but himself to see if it actually would work, and um, and so that's how he died. And, and he is actually buried. I've never visited his grave, uh, but he is. Uh, I visited his wife's grave, who was buried up in Northampton. But he is actually buried in at Princeton. Um, uh, his wife was away from him at the time, and uh, and you can go up to the Northampton Cemetery and you can visit all their graves. David Brainerd's grave. His father, uh, his grandfather Solomon Stoddard, is buried up in Northampton. And, um, <clears throat> but I was always, I know I'm going on and on. Well, and forgive me. Yeah. No, I was yeah. going to say, yeah. I think you're you're headed here. Yeah. What are, what are some of the highlights of these resolutions that, that really stand out to you? Well, maybe we can put a link to this, uh, later on in, in this, uh, in the description, in the descriptions, but, sure. um, cause this one I, I like, uh, because, you know, you can read them one to 70 and you'll still get everything. That's how I read them initially, but the way the way that this uh, particular list breaks them up is is into uh, basically just different categories, um, and so you read them based upon the, the the categories that this particular individual uh, chose for it, and uh, so I just I read uh, kind of you know, I'll read a couple of them. Um, yeah, sure. I, well, first I want to read the thing that he says right at the top. He says this: being sensible. Uh, this is his like prelude to the whole to the whole resolutions. He says, "Being sensible that I am unable to do anything without God's help, I do humbly entreat Him by His grace to enable me to keep these resolutions so far as they are agreeable to His will for Christ's sake." There's a lot to unpack just with that. Right in, right in the beginning, right? I mean, it's amazing. That's one sentence, and he's already <laughs> there's so much right. theology there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely amazing. There's I mean, a it, lot there. It really is. There's that. There's that. Uh, that sense of right. Uh, more Christ, less me. Right. You know what I mean? That handing over of control. Right. To God, uh, that humility that it takes that he to needs be that God's way. help. He yep. says, "Being sensible that I am, I know that I am unable, unable. Yeah. to do anything yeah. apart from God's help." Yeah, and then calling on his grace to enable him. I need so your enablement. Calling to help on God's to do power to enable him to do what I'm about to say. <laughs> right. Right. And it's amazing. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. He gives it all to him right away, right at the beginning. And yeah. and uh, which is so true because and a lot of times when we met, yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, please, listen, yeah, go ahead. It's even, amazing. Even it more really than is. that. Even more than yeah. that. So far as they are agreeable to his will. It's, yeah, it, it's so like so he, it's he not acknowledges. Like, it's not like everything just for everything's sake. It's right. Everything as you see fit. As you see fit. Yeah. You you God help me to fit. do this. And Absolutely. then not only that, at the very end, for yeah. the glory of Christ. For the glory of Christ. For yeah. for, for, for Christ's, Christ's sake. sake. Yeah. And uh, so and that, there's a lot there just in that sense. There's so much yeah. right there, and you could just. Spend He's not even into the resolutions yet. No, but but this is the this is the this is yeah. why they're so impactful to me because yeah. a lot of times when I make resolutions in my life. It's all my own willpower. All it's all my. It's all self-based. Yeah. It's all and this. It right from the get-go. He he acknowledges I cannot do this without God, and 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 it sets the tone. It does right from yeah. the get-go. And by yeah. the way, 
Uh, what a great example. Yeah, if yeah. it's not his will, you know, and it's not for his glory, uh, then it, then they, I have no means of uh, of being able to do this. And yeah. so, so anywho, so the way that this gentleman breaks them down, uh, I'm not even sure who 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 this is. I mean, it's uh, obviously on a on a, uh, a Baptist church's website here um, that I didn't really look up, but I really like the way that they broke it down. Yeah, is he breaks it down first and foremost uh, with the overall life mission, and he wrote a ton about what his life. What he, how he wanted uh, to live uh, his life, like what his purpose, what his mission was, and um, and I always loved Resolution One, and he's and he opens with this one. Yep. He says this: uh, resolved that I will do whatsoever I think to be most to God's glory hmm. and my own good, profit and pleasure, in the whole of my duration, without any consideration of time, whether now and there's tons here, yeah. whether now. Or never so many myriads of ages, My- myriads. myriads, excuse me, yeah, myriads. <laughs> I always get that. Myriads uh, of ages hence, resolve to do whatever I think to be my duty, and uh, most for the good and advantage of mankind in general. Resolve to do this, whatever difficulties I meet with, how many and how great whatsoever. There is a ton Oof. there, but talk about yeah. starting that out with. With a with a deep and impactful one, yeah, you know, yeah. Number one is a doozy. It is. <laughs> now, we're not going to go through all seventy, but number one is a doozy. It really is. And yeah. when you break, this is why I'm telling you, like Jonathan Edwards, if you want, if you want to read something that is going to challenge you, yeah. and re- like and it's going to take you years to do, read. I mean, you can just read these. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. For goodness' sakes, but but um, but you know, I yeah. wonder. Yeah, go ahead. I wonder if. Uh, even just reading one of these a day for a, little, it, a, yeah. li- a little over two yeah. months. It would yeah. take a little over two months. Right. I wonder how much of a difference that would make to really meditate. And, I mean, obviously, in addition to your scripture right. study. Not replacing scripture study. No. But just kind of taking one of these at a time. And just and, pick them apart. Yeah. And just pick them apart. I wonder right. how... That would be really beneficial probably, right? I, I, oh, okay. I, 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 actually, I actually did that back when I was in Bible college. Because I just... I read down through them. I remember distinctly. I was sitting... I, I had I had picked it up. Um, I had picked up a little Jonathan Edwards book somebody had re- recommended me read, and I remember because I was sitting on my father's couch. Uh, it was during the summertime, and I, it wasn't required reading or anything like that. And I was just reading it just for uh, whatever. And I came happened to come across the resolutions, mm. and uh, and I was just and I read down through all of them, and I'm like, mm. like my mind blown. And I'm like, and so then I started every day doing that. I have a notebook somewhere where I wrote down my thoughts on it. We should do like a Gospelicious Radio, like Facebook post, Jonathan Edwards Resolution Challenge. Maybe we'll start that in January. You know, that would be great. We should do that. We should do that. It would bring us right right into what, mid-March about? It would bring us right into March. That would be great. I think we should do that. That's a great idea. A Resolution uh, Challenge. Take one and and kind of... uh, uh, do like a little paragraph devotional right on, right. The, on the Facebook page right hold and us to that Facebook amen page. yeah and um, that'd be great I love resolution but, six uh, yeah, yeah go ahead no go, I was yeah, gonna say yeah, one last thing yeah, on yeah, one yeah go ahead please you can yeah. kind of no. sense the uh, the overall just kind of completeness of the dedication right he's talking about words of the whole of my duration absolutely uh, all of the myriads of ages hence as in for for all Forever. time the yeah. completeness of time yes right? you talk about for the advantage of mankind. So right. you're talking about the completeness of people. Of people as well. And yeah. then, so, whatever difficulties, uh, in other words, all-encompassing yeah. all the challenges. Even even if face. it's going to challenge so me, he's, I'm going to he, continue to do this. He's challenging himself to be completely dedicated. Amen. Uh, not It's not a partway thing. No. It's... Nothing or, right. or everything. It's 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 not a two way. It's street black and here. white, There's man. Coming, absolutely, it's everything. Absolutely, and uh, that's a very fitting one to start with. It really is, yeah. and that's why I love I yeah. love that one, and I just imagine him writing that that out, you know, at the time. Just and my my brain doesn't work like that. You right. know what I mean? Like you know, and just to think about like I yeah. want to give myself to this. Yeah. entirely like there is no backing down and yeah. and that's why i like resolution six that goes along with it it says and this is a much simplified one to live with all of my my life or with all of my might while i do live completeness of effort exactly and and and, and that's another thing too is is just i i um and and uh, i forget which which number it is it's towards the end uh but um 
Uh, he, uh, he gets into it later on, but he talks. He talks a lot. He says, "While I do live," mm. he had a very real sense of the shortness of time. You know what I mean? Like I have very limited time on this planet, and so what am I going to? And it might be shorter than I think. So what am I going to do with it? You know what I mean? I am so guilty, Adam, of wasting my time. I mean, like, and and what I mean by this is not that we can't enjoy things. You right. know what I mean? Right, right. And because I because there's I mean, an ex- there's a uh, I think extreme. an extreme to go to that is is wrong too. Because like because here's the deal to it's never like, enjoy anything. Well, it's like yeah, I can, God it, gave us things to enjoy. Like, should I just always be sitting down reading my Bible? No, I mean that's that's not. I mean, God right. obviously wants us to live life right. and wants us to enjoy to be with it people. absolutely and to be with people and to and to focus and to on grow relationships. It's very relational, yeah. But I also am guilty a lot of times of of uh, of wasting my time, and I can and I sure. can name those things. Yeah. And I think to myself, man, you know, it just challenges you. You know what I mean? Yeah. As you're reading through, I love that phrase you know? to live with all my might. Yeah, to with live all of my might. with all my might. Right. I mean that is again the the, the fullness yeah. of of effort required to do that. Right. I mean it just all encompassing. You know what I mean? It is. It, it's it's almost an impossible challenge in a way. Right. It because is. Because it, it, you can't really keep that up. It seems well, sometimes. I mean, well, that's... it's amazing because the one that came right before it, right? It, he, it's number five. It's down under time management on your list. Yeah. Um, it says resolved because he broke it up that way. Number five, resolved never to lose one moment of time. But improve it the most profitable way that I can. I mean, make the most of every moment. Make the most of every single moment. Yeah. I mean, and uh, I just, uh, you know, it's 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 amazing. And um, and along with that, I really I really like actually this entire list yeah. of time management ones. If if uh, I just read down through a couple of them, resolve never to do anything which I should be afraid to do, if it were the last hour of my life. Like, even at the very last, you know, like, people don't think like this anymore. Yeah. You know? Um, he was very aware of his temporality. Right. You know what I mean? Right. He was very aware of his of his place. Yes. Like, he didn't place himself in the, the world revolves around me. That's right. Is I know that I'm here for a short place. period of time, and I know I'm just a blip on the radar. And so I better make the most of it so while I can. I better make I the most of it while I can. <laughs> yeah. But not in like that Ecclesiastes way, like live, drink, and, you know, eat, drink, and, right. and uh, whatever, and because and right. today we die. No, he he wants yeah. to carpe diem, right? Carpe diem, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. and no, he wants to he wants to honor Christ with what he has. I mean, yeah. going down to number seventeen, yeah. he says, uh, "Resolved that I will live so that I shall wish I had done when I die." I mean, mm. isn't that what we all wish? Mm. But again, like when we make resolutions at the beginning of the year. Like, are we thinking this way? I mean, like, like I want to live. I want to live so that when I come to die, no matter when that is, you know that you know mm. uh, I've lived. You know what I mean? I've lived for the glory of God, like you said before. I mm. mean, th- this is all encompassing. Number eighteen: resolve to live so that at all times, as I think is best in my de- devote frames or devout frames. And when I have clearest notions of things of the gospel and another world. So along with that, he's not just talking about... It's amazing because you can see his train of thought when he goes from 17 to 18. This is why reading them sometimes in order is, is, is a good thing. I like, I like the way he's broken them up. But sometimes it's easier... I would recommend reading it first if if it's the first time you're ever reading it, yeah. reading them in order. But kind of but, sense his flow of thought. Yes, yeah. exactly. And uh, yeah, we're kind of skipping around, but you can yeah. definitely catch that uh, that context. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and a lot of them have to do with that because I mean, like you know, I mean, he puts it under the category of time management. Uh, one of the things that uh, here's another thing that that uh, I mean, even we talk about resolutions and what we eat. Look at number forty at the bottom there. I was going to look at number twenty. Where's, where's number, 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 number 20 says, resolve to maintain the strictest temperance in eating and drinking. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I fail on that I one. I fail on that one, you know. Oh, man. And number 42, it's the same one. Resolve to, to inquire every night before I go to bed whether I have acted in the best way I possibly could with respect to eating and drinking. Yeah. You know, man, man dude, yeah. I, I it's, it's right? I mean, yeah. there's so many things that, that, that you can learn from this. You know, and it's interesting, too. Number I see number 41. And, yeah. And, uh... It's uh, you can see where he's thinking in terms of um, not only living with full effort, but also living with a full effort to self improve. Yes. So you see, you see, um, it says resolve to ask myself at the end of every day, week, month, and year, constant self evaluation. Right. 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 Wherein I could possibly, in any respect, have done better. Right. 
Right. And that's and, a challenge right there in itself. And it's amazing but, to me because it's like this this man this man was like literally one of the smartest men that ever walked right. the planet. And uh And that's know, scriptural too. And it's scriptural to, to challenge um, yourself, yeah. It's uh you know, the the, the, the scripture of, you know, uh, testing yourself, testing your faith, right. making sure you're in the faith and yeah. making sure that you're uh, that you're growing right. growth, right? Growth. Absolutely, man. Um, you know, not staying in that spiritual milk, but you know, uh growing into that meat growing into the meat of the word absolutely meat of the word right you, know, you can kind of you can there's there's essence of that there too absolutely um, the the not only self evaluation but of growth is right well, so. and and so i mean there, there's that idea i mean like mm-hmm. i like that he calls it time management but i mean again it's it's really just my own personal spiritual growth while i'm yeah. here on this on this planet yeah. um, and then he's got a lot of the regular ones that uh, that that things that we need to be challenged which Again, this is where I really like your idea of starting in January, putting one up every day. Yeah. Uh, because if you go down to the relationship one, number 14, he says, resolve never to do anything out of revenge. Ah. Uh, Dude. Right? I mean, biblical. I mean, things wrath, that... Wrath, anger. Right. Yeah. Resolve never to suffer the you least... Know, yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah. but with 14, without a yeah. revenge, because revenge is often a um, spur-of-the-moment reactionary right. thing, right? Yes. Revenge is often done in times where we're not really thinking straight. It's right. in just we're kind of blinded by rage or anger or making wrath. those yeah. Uh, never do anything out of re- of revenge. It it almost seems like it's uh, he's dedicating himself to think things through. Right. To okay, take a pause, think. You take a breath. I'm gonna I'm gonna think through exactly what I say. Right. You know because I mean? oftentimes, if you do that, yeah. You're not gonna be vengeful. No, no. Because vengeful is well, often done well, in that reactionary mode, right? Where you're moment just like, where I just want to blast this person, right. and I just wanna... someone does something, you immediately revenge, right? You know? and, when you uh, when you take that time to think, and not only that, but to pray, yeah, to reflect, right, on God and what He's done for you, you're not gonna be vengeful. It's it's just a, and this is where like in like, that one little short sentence, a lot little, of a little, lot of uh, so much. Yeah, there's so much there. Yeah. And then, like, jumping down, you jump down to uh, number 31 there, it says, uh, resolve never to, say, it goes right along with what you're saying, never to say anything at all against anybody, but when it is perfectly agreeable to the highest degree of Christian honor mm. and of love to mankind, agreeable to the lowest humility <laughs> and sense of my own faults and failings, and agreeable to the golden rule, often when I have said anything against anyone, to bring it to and to try it strictly by the test of this resolution. <laughs> You know, I mean, I just don't do this stuff. Yeah. Like, and it's just such a challenge. And like number 70, this was the last one that he wrote, right? And this was the last in the entire list. But it's down there in the bottom of the relationship section. It says, let there be something of benevolence in all that I speak. In everything that I say. I, you know, I know I can be such a, a, a glass is half empty person. And I can be guilty of, you know, uh, really dogging on people. And, um, you know, and being the exact opposite of benevolent. Hmm. Um, but in everything that I say, I There's, mean, it's uh, just a challenge, yeah. You know, yeah. that that well-meaningness, that kindness right. that comes along with that uh, in all that I speak. You know, when you think of, uh, when you think of scripture, right. okay, there's something in every verse for us right you know from god to us absolutely and it's i mean it's fitting that he ends with that too right it's sort of the all-encompassing conclusion to everything he just right kind of went through let there be something in benevolence in all that i speak so right he wants it's almost a um he wants his legacy to be that of kindness absolutely which reflects christ right which is resolution one yeah i want to <laughs> to glorify christ, christ. To glorify christ um, absolutely it's very fitting that he ends with that too right uh and what a challenge that is for me for for all of us all of us man to to be challenged to in everything that we say that there be benevolence uh, benev- benevolence there. well again it goes back to that uh, really that 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 idea of the brevity of life that yeah. he had because listen you might not have Tomorrow, like I think about our church members, and and you know, you know, living as a family, as a body of Christ, it's a good lesson for the whole church, to be honest with you, because we are not guaranteed tomorrow with each other. We are not. It's why it's like it going down to number nine here under suffering, right? I talked about how he had a real, a real uh, 
strong sense of the, the shortness of life. Take a look at number nine. I was looking for this one. Resolve to think much on all occasions of my own dying and of the common circumstances which attend death. The common, that's interesting. Right? Man. You think that's morbid. You'd think, well, uh, like, our, our culture looks at it as morbid, but... Yeah, the yeah. first time you read that, you're like, man, that's dark. That's dark. It's grim, it's very right? dark yeah. and grim. You know? But... But it's, it's interesting, too, because... It, you know, continue. What were you no, 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 but, but yeah, I was just going to say it gives perspective, but go ahead, yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of where I'm going, is because, I mean, when you think of, uh, as a Christian, as a believer... Right. Um, to think upon death is to think upon life. Yeah, exactly. You right. know? Cause I mean, death, eternal life, Because right? death, death is... is it's different for a believer because it it, it's not death. It's not. It is not death it's to just, die. That's a. That's an it's old. It's not death to die. Yeah. Right. That's you know? that's a great way to say yeah, it. It's it not is. death to die. That's a. It's a good uh, uh, new hymn that was that was written a couple years ago. One of my favorite. I actually. Uh, it's one of those songs that uh, that I want. I want sung at my funeral someday. Okay. It's, it is not death to die. You know what I mean. You know what? I, d- between yeah. you and me, what yeah. I would love to have sung at What's my that? funeral. What's that? And can it be? And can it be that I should gain? I Amen. love that song. That's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite one. hymns. You know, amen. It's amazing. I love it's, that song. It's a great. It's a great one. And I love uh, that that build up in the chorus. Oh yeah, you know, and then you build up all the way to oh the end. Oh my god, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Amazing love, you know. Yeah, it's and, great. Uh, anyway, so if no. you if you all catch that, remember at my funeral, play amen. that. Amen. Same here. You know what I mean? And can it be? End it with that. <laughs> yeah, amen. Yeah, you know. I love it. Well, well, if I'm gospel you know, message I, in I, there too. You know, well, you, well, here, you know, what, like you gospel said, gospel message in that song. There is, amen, brother. But no, but like I said, I think. I think my, my entire point here is is um, uh, you know with with bringing these out uh, is because I'm not sure how far along we are with as far as our uh, uh, we you know, got our about uh, fifteen minutes maybe. We, we do okay yeah. all right cool all right I, I think thought, we start we yeah. closer you know yeah. what I mean but um, you know I, I you know I just think that it's it, you know going back to number nine you know the idea yeah. of, of the of the more the morbidness and um, the common circumstances which attend uh, death. You know, again, like, and then he has other ones here. I mean, I'm just looking at him. You're looking at number 10, I mean. Yeah, number 10, resolved when I feel pain pain, to think of the pains of martyrdom and of hell. In other words, this is not the worst it could be. It's not the worst it could be. (laughs) Not at all. But try telling yourself that when you're going through pain, right? Try telling someone that who has cancer. Or has cancer or anything like that. Or, you know, has a leg amputated from, you know, the war. But but this is why I find it so amazing that this is a 18, 19-year-old man that's writing this. Yeah. Now again, that idealism that that eighteen year olds have, sure. but still being so focused on the right things, like having this in your mind, that perspective, at, right at a young age, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you know, I mean, resolve number sixty seven, after affliction, to inquire what I am the I am the better for them, for the for the afflictions, what good I have got James. from them, right? Yes, right from James. Right, right? from James, yeah. And, uh, and trials of many kinds. Absolutely, that are meant for our growth, yeah. you know. And yeah. so I just, it's just absolutely amazing uh, what he uh, what he does here, and um, and he's got this. He's got a whole section on uh, on character uh, that they that they break it up in. What character. are a couple you got from there? Um, just uh, trying to find the one I was looking at earlier. Um, what number was it? It was. Um, uh, uh, I think it's number forty-seven. It says, "Resolve to in- endeavor uh, to my utmost to deny uh, whatever is not most agreeable to a good and universally sweet and benevolent, quiet. That's what I need to learn. Peaceable, mm. contented, easy, compassionate, generous, humble, meek, modest, submissive, obliging, diligent, and industrious, charitable, even patient, even patient." moderate, forgiving, sincere temper, and to do all things that such a temper would lead me to, examine strictly every week whether I have done so. And it's, I love that last line because that, that list is, I mean, I thought the fruits of the spirit were, uh, were, were, you know, pretty comprehensive, (laughs) pretty comprehensive, but I mean, this, it goes, you know, it's, it's, it's application to these verses, you know what I mean? But I, but I love, I, I, I'd like to wonder. There's a lot of Galatians there. Definitely. Uh, Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But he, but he, but he writes there at the end, and he does this on several of them. He's, but he says, examine it strictly every week, whether I've done so. What prompted him to do that? Is what I would like to ask, hmm. like to write that in there. Did did he like you and me? Like we make mistakes in these areas all the time. Oh, sure. I mean, where I'm not, I'm 
universally sweet. That's not me. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not you. Yeah. I, I can be sweet. I'm not. Guy, you, I'm not you know, but you know, there are times where I'm not very forgiving. No. I, mean, yeah. I could look at all these and think of examples where I've defied all of those. And what's amazing too is no, notice when it was written too. It, it, it tells you when he was written it. When, when did he, when did he write this out? He wrote it Sabbath morning, May fifth, seventeen twenty three. Wow. So he was obviously in the early morning hours examining his heart before worship. Yeah. Because that's you know again and and he was probably examining himself and had to write it down to say, listen. Maybe I haven't been these things. Or maybe he was examining a text of scripture. I don't know. But I just think to myself, like, if I write something down and went to the went to the extent to write this whole thing down and then tell myself to examine myself every week, I, I just wonder what, what prompted him. It's probably just his own sin. Um, maybe, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just like you and he, me. He was, he was very, you can get just get a sense from reading any of these, yeah. that he was very sensitive to, to his own faults, very much so, very much. Which, which, which I believe uh, is definitely a gift from God. No, oh, definitely. You know, because um, yeah, we that don't. Is, often, yeah. That is that is huge. I think a lot of times we get kind of like desensitized or maybe um, hardened. Oh yeah, definitely. to our sin, right? Almost to the point where we kind of subconsciously forget that we're actually sinning. And we don't see it, you know. And that and we, we lose that sensitivity to the fact that we're wronging God in a certain aspect. Again, right. I, I'm Absolutely. speaking in generalities, but like a lot of times it, it almost takes someone else to point it out to us that we suddenly realize we're doing it. Right. You know, whereas, whereas it looks like Jonathan Edwards was very intentional about... Self-examination, these kind of yeah, things, and right? very, yeah, and very, very, very uh, diligently and really almost, like, under a microscope. Right. Like, and, and, I, and I don't know him, obviously. I don't know yeah. how, you know, how uh, how severe he was on right. himself. It, it, seems, it seems he was quite severe on himself sometimes. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, it's very... Some, sometimes it looks like um, necessarily so. Well, you know, but the, th but the thing is this, is in the, and that's one of the things, and, and that's where we get kind of like the severity of, of his preaching. You know what I mean? He was yeah. a very, with, with Edwards too, I mean, he was a very, uh, from what they describe is a, um, he, he wasn't an especially, because this was commonplace at the time, uh, he wasn't an especially passionate preacher. He was, they say that most of his sermons he preached in like a monotone type, um, you know, almost reflective tone, hmm. very quiet. Um, matter of fact, he, I was reading a book, uh, the other day for, for class about, uh, George Whitfield, who was, uh, who was a friend of Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, of course, coming from, from England and then coming over here and, and being a part of the first great awakening. And whereas Whitfield was, um, was, uh, the exact opposite. He was actually a, um, uh, uh, just a superstar, like one of the the first superstar preachers of his day, changing it up. Like I mean, he was he was loud and he was, you know, like in your face about things. And right. Edwards actually criticized him for that. But, but the reason I bring that up is because you, could, from what they say of the way that he preached, it was very self reflecting, and um, and it might even seem like he was coming down upon you, uh, but really, when you read stuff like this, he was really examining his own heart and you see yeah, that yeah. you see that in a lot of his works and any good preacher is going to do that you know what i mean preach to themselves preach to themselves first and yeah. um and that's what i see when i when i read through this maybe i'm maybe i'm just picking it apart too much but i i really see that yeah, um yeah. you know um he goes on down 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 here to the spiritual life one and i think that this is that this is important i mean like i mean there's 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 so many in the next in the next few lines um he says for number 25 he says resolve to examine carefully and constantly what that one thing in me is which causes me in the least to doubt hmm. the love of god and to direct all my forces against it i mean <laughs> to go on the offensive against doubt against doubt of my salvation yeah. doubt in my god like even like you know uh tonight we had prayer meeting and um we had uh somebody who was just because it's it's been really good in prayer meeting lately i mean really good we have a we have a group of guys that have been coming and and they're just uh, they're sharing a lot of their faults and failures and something major went went wrong in this this one young man's life tonight and uh, or in the past couple of days and he shared it and he and he mentioned how he uh, just began to doubt that God loved him and be angry with him 
and uh, and I was getting I got thinking to myself like even now too was but I was thinking it earlier was you know how easy it is for us to doubt God's love when we are going through trials uh, you know what I mean like when we're going through times yeah. where we have to be patient right you know I'm just a leaf in the wind sometimes man right I'm I feel the same like way. that sometimes yeah it's it's uh, I think back in just amazement of how many times I've doubted God uh, in in trials me too man me yeah. too. Yeah. We all do, <laughs> but but this is where and and this is where I think again Edwards isn't writing this because he thinks you know that he thinks he's some kind of superstar. We just talked about his humility. It's the exact opposite. It's the exact <laughs> opposite. He needed reminding. Yeah, you don't put this kind of thing in in writing unless you really really mean it, and um, and that's why I just think like you know a lot of times no this is not scripture. It's based on scripture a lot. Right. You know what I mean? But oh, it's, 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 it's all it's dripping like, with scripture. dripping with yeah. scripture. Yeah. yeah, you know, but. Yeah. This is where, like, I think it's so important for us to, as believers, to humble ourselves and say, yes, indeed, I can learn from from uh, from those who have gone on before us. I mean, I think some of the best, uh, you know, and again, I keep going on about this, uh, but I, I don't read a lot of newer books that are put out today, um, you know, in the Christian bookstore. Uh, I just don't. Um, a lot, you know, there's some, there's a lot of good ones. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, like, but, but most of them are, are books about, um, you know, I mean, they, you know, they, there's, I mean, most of them in, in generic Christian living section and stuff like that. No, most of it's motivational speaking. Most, motivational yeah. speaking, these kind of things. Whereas these old, these old, uh, texts, you know, from, from these men that really examine their hearts and could articulate it very well, just, they challenge you. And, um, mm, mm. anyways, um. But like going down, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, like number twenty-eight underneath the scriptures, resolved. Here's one. Here's one for, for all of us again Oof, to, yeah. to study the scriptures <laughs> so steadily, constantly, and frequently, as that I may find and plainly perceive to grow in the knowledge of the same. You know, I mean that's absolutely amazing. Gauntlet uh, laid. Right. Yeah. So steadily, constantly, and frequently. I mean, he didn't leave anything out there steadily constantly frequently you know what i mean yeah and um then not to mention you know i mean he again continuing to break it up into prayer um uh you know we'll just read number 29 resolve never to count that a prayer nor let that pass as a prayer nor that as a petition of a prayer which is so made that i cannot hope that god mm. will answer it nor that as a confession, which I cannot hope God will accept. You ever you ever talk about praying? I had this discussion with a with another with another brother a long time ago about praying with uh, assurance mm. of mm. of um, confidence, confidence, and these kind of things yeah. uh, that God will answer. And I think that again, it's rooted in the sovereignty of God in those cases, of course. Yeah. But uh, but he he was resolved not to pray something. Um. That he that he was not hopeful that God or knew and hope there is a different term for hope. It's an assurance, an assured hope that God will actually answer it. And um, hmm. here's here's I, there's, I'm there's, sorry, a, yeah. there's a whole podcast. There is. With that. I mean, I mean I, I, we're, we're going to come back to this. Yeah, yeah. But one of these days, we we'll should, come, I mean, yeah. I, you know, we'll we'll do we'll do a Jonathan Edwards, uh, you know, part we'll do a, a part two, you know, part do, you know, that's right, part you know, duh. Duh, you know, at some point, but. But I love yeah, I love and, and here. because there's a lot of meat here. But then there's there's a ton of other stuff we could do. We could do religious affections. We could do a lot of things. Yeah, but, yeah, definitely. But like, but like the Lord's Day here. Now again, I don't know if this is more of a, a, a culture thing at the time. But again, it is the Lord's Day, and we are to set it aside. We we are to do this. Resolve never number thirty eight to speak anything that is ridiculous, sportive, or a matter of laughter on the Lord's Day. Oh boy. Now, I here's the deal. That's a little bit more cultural. Yeah, that's, that's cultural. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's. I, I think that speaks more to the reverence of right. the Lord's Day, right? Of the Sabbath, as opposed to what he's actually. I, I think that what he's saying there is more cultural than yes. Um, than I, I don't think that can be literally applied to. Neither All should time. it. Yeah, because because this is where this is where we need to analyze. You know, because not everything needs to history too. Exactly, yeah. because they're Puritans, right? And right. you know, the deal is is that the Puritans got they didn't get everything right. Okay, and I don't think Jonathan Edwards got everything right. Um, 
I think particularly on some of their... Uh, I think, however, let me back up the truck here on this. I think that there should be a reverence for the Lord's Day. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. that we should make it holy like, I think like the Lord says. Exa- very correct, yeah, sure. And that we really should watch ourselves on the Lord's Day. I think that... I, I don't think that... Um, the Lord's Day was meant to be a day where we worship and we rest mm-hmm. uh, for for the rest of the week and focus our minds mm-hmm. completely on the Lord. Now, yeah. does that mean like I remember when I came here, I uh, there was a there was an older gentleman who uh, said that just the life of the church had changed so much over over the years. Where uh, one time when he was a young man in in the you know sixties or whatever, that he was out mowing his grass on Sunday afternoon in between, and somebody from the church drove by because they had evening service, working on the Sabbath, working on the Sabbath, yeah. and they accused him. Now, do I agree with the with the guy that was judging him? No, um, I think that you can honor God on the Lord's Day and mow your grass. I do. Yeah. Um, I think that that's taking it a tad too far. I think of mowing far. your grass is relaxing. Exactly, but I think that that's it's not what it, to me, yeah. exactly. I but, like it, yeah. but that's what I'm trying to say. Right. It's like you yeah. know, it's like you know, uh, I I don't. The, the, I think there's Christian liberty there in in that, right? Uh, and I think um, this was his way, right, in his own Christian liberty right. to honor the Lord's Day. That's right. Um, you know, that's not to say, oh, you know. We shouldn't be you know, laughing at all on the Sabbath. Like matter of laughter on the Lord's Day. Yeah. Like I laugh all the time. I with think people I think on that's just Day. saying he, yeah. he he doesn't want to make light right of the Sabbath. Yeah, you know. No, and, I get and, that part, and I get that too. Yeah. You know, so and um, that's why that's what I get from that. Absolutely, yeah. and um, and that's I think interesting. That it is an interesting one, hmm. and uh, you know, and and then just uh, you know, there's there's uh, vivification. You want to do uh, you want to do three more? Yeah, let's do three more. You know, I'm just looking, and then we'll end it there. I mean, I'm just looking down through here. I mean, you know, um, yeah, I'm actually going to move down to mortification of sin and self examination because, you know, I mean, we could spend a whole ton of the time on on the righteousness one, unless you see one that you wanted to do. But, Mm. um, but I mean, uh, because I mean, some of those are deep on that one. Yeah. But he says this. um, um, uh, Let's uh, number sixty. He says resolved. uh, Whenever my feelings begin to appear. In the least out of order, uh-huh. when I am conscious of the least uneasiness within, or the least irregularity without, I will then subject myself to the strictest examination. Um, again, examining. It's again, just, yeah. Um, Feelings. Very much so. Yeah. Interesting. Again, um, a recognition of the fact that he is an emotional being. Right. Who, you know, n- not all feelings that we have are rational. Right. You know, a lot of them, a lot of them are irrational. Yes, very much. They make much. no sense. Right. And by the way, that's men and women. That is both men and women. I know a lot of that's, times. You a know, lot of times, I think women get get unfairly criticized for being like the only gender that you that know, that is oh, that you feels know, yeah, oh, irrational. Yeah. No, no, we we all uh, do. Guys, I know I do. <laughs> guys, we yeah. do too. Okay. Amen. Just saying. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so you know, again, it comes like. It, it's that recognition of, oh, um, you know, I'm feeling out of control. Right. You know, I need to rein it in. Um, and then, and then, you know, and I like how he puts the not just examination, but strictest examination. Like there yeah. was a there was a seriousness to it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, where it was like, you know what? Like, listen, um, you know, I whenever I act, you know, out out of order. Um, whenever I even have a thought of this kind of irregularity, as he puts it, you know, I need to I need to examine my heart. Um, um, he says, number fifty six. This is another good one. Resolve never to give over, nor in the least to slacken my fight with my corruptions, mm. however unsuccessful I may be. Fighting it, his sin, right? And and how often do we fail? How often? How often are we unsuccessful? You know, yeah. right? Man, it's heavy stuff. Yeah. I mean, oh, you, you almost walk away like beat up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? In a good way, though. But I it's mean, a good way. But never in give a healthy up. Healthy way. Yeah. Resolved. I'm never going to give up against my fight against mm. sin because mm. it's so easy just to give up and throw in the towel when it comes to our, you know. Yeah. But no, I, I, I might be unsuccessful. I'll keep fighting. I'm gonna keep fighting. You know, mm. and. um Again, effort. Absolutely. You know, a, a lot of this, and we'll do yeah, one more. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of this, I, I really get this sense of like, he was really big, I think, on fighting like sloth and like laziness. Yes, yes, he and was. And like, 
he he was very into effort uh, in terms of just like being diligent in his spiritual walk. Yes, he was. Everything that he did discipline. was intentional discipline. Yes, yeah. you know, very much so. Yeah. Like laziness was the enemy. Yeah, I know. And, you know? and 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 I'll be honest with you, laziness. Uh, you know, oh, I, struggle with I struggle with it all the yeah, time. Sure. That's why this is like so amazing to me because yeah. it's, it's like, like a wake up call, man. It really it's is. The pants. I love. I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, love it. I, and I, I, forgive me if that's crude, but no, I mean, it's, it's not. It's it, been, and I'm just it gets you, know, you going, man. Yeah, I, it was funny today. I you know, I mean, I you know, I was thinking about like you know, again, you know, this and and it's kind of been on my mind a little bit, but just kind of reviewing this in 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 light of. Uh, in light of doing this and then just going through them again, I mean, it's just, it just reinvigorates me, um, mm. you know, so much. But I mean, number 53, and we'll end on this one, it says, this will it be says, the... the bow, you know, the bow. Resolve to improve every opportunity uh, when I am in uh, the best and happiest frame of mind to cast and venture my soul on the Lord Jesus Christ, to trust and confide in Him and consecrate myself wholly to Him. Uh, that from this I may have assurance of my safety, knowing that I confide in my Redeemer. <sighs> and I like how he says, when That's I awesome. am in the <laughs> best and happiest frame of mind. Yeah. Because we get distracted when we're in the best and happiest frame of mind and get our minds off of Jesus. Because that's funny. Because uh, well, it's like, yeah. <laughs> usually we try to do that when we're in the worst right. frame of mind. <laughs> But the worst like, and saddest frame of mind, right? Yeah, the like, exact like, opposite. Like yeah. We feel like we need that reminder when we're in the terrible place. Right. N but this is when we are in the best of places. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's so true because a lot of maybe. times we, we get we get drawn into the, the the temptations of sin when we're in those places. Yes, we do. You but know, when everything's going well. But pride, man. Right. I'm, I'm doing great all by myself. You know? That's right. You know? But that's so good. That's a great reminder of, hey, you know, you're doing so good. Because of because of Christ, Amen. Because that I will confide yeah. in my Redeemer, Amen. Personal. Amen to that, Amen, brother. Good, good, good discussion. We're gonna have yeah. to come back to yeah, we'll to, come back to that to, to Johnny E. There's a lot some, here. Uh, yeah, there is. You know, but I like the idea of doing that thing in January. Though. I mean, we'll start that off in the new year. We'll, we'll start uh, that in the new year for our. Uh, we'll, as, do, uh, we'll do a little um, social media. Uh, posting maybe yeah. like once every day or two. That'd be great. And we'll uh, we'll go through the list. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. We had to think of a way to maybe uh, involve involve some of our viewers and yeah, viewers and listeners on that. We do. Yeah, see how we can do that. And uh, and if and if you all have any ideas yeah. on how to do that, you know what I mean. We'll do some things. I think yeah. it's worth doing. I think so too. You know, and uh, we'll uh, attach it to. Uh, obviously, we want to come back to scripture. Right. Uh, we don't want to do the you know the. The, the Gospel of Edwards. No, but uh, yeah, we but always we, wanted, have we to, always but... want to bring it back to scripture. But I think that's uh, there is a like I said, this is dripping with scripture. Oh, I know it's it's everywhere. <laughs> it's awesome. And, yeah. and all the greats and all the greats yeah. did. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I love Spurgeon. Spurgeon. That's why I love Luther, yeah. Calvin, all these men. Yeah. I mean, they were they they what uh, what they uh, what Moody said of Spurgeon was that if you cut the man, he he bleeds bibline is what is is he made up a word <laughs> moody was good at that you know what i mean and uh, that's awesome and so yeah and so we need to be striving awesome. for that but that's how i feel about edwards you know for yeah. sure but anywho, yeah. you know moody moody's actually a guy i'd like to maybe oh he's great too. too he's he with the with the fire the great chicago fire oh that, yeah that was and what came out of that right a lot of a lot of uh good came from that, that terrible event yep. And, um, and he he used that tragedy for good. It's amazing though. I mean, even with Moody's life, we could, we could do a whole. Oh, we, you know, we should, we should talk about like these men and the their greats. lives, the greats yeah, at some yeah, point. Yeah. Because because even Moody was another New England boy. He was he right was? up the road up here in in Northfield, Mass. Yeah. And uh, and his home is actually uh, is still there. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, yeah, that just little side of Boston, right? Yeah, that little yeah. picture up there with Carissa right there. You know, is is oh, her yeah. playing in Moody's backyard? That house that's in the picture is Moody's house. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah. So I I. Uh, I love that's that picture, awesome. so I got it blown up and framed. That's so because I was like, my little girl played in Dio Moody's backyard, and so you know. So, but anyways, yeah, we'll, we'll do like an anthology series yes, or something. You know, on, do, on the do great, pick, pick yeah. some of the greats. You know, and, but uh, uh, well, guys, amen. that's all we got for tonight. Amen. For tonight, tonight. for tonight. this episode, for, I know. I know. Um, I know we're kind of running out of steam. It was, here, first, but... it was the first time we've done one at night in a long time. Yeah, it's yeah. been a while. You know, oh, yeah. right. It was good. Usually, usually it works out to do them in the mornings, but uh, yeah. but we uh, we do when we can. Amen. 
Uh, guys, uh, check out Tim's Theology Thursday. You got one coming tomorrow? Oh, I, well, tomorrow. We, at, by the time you guys get this, it'll already have come out. Yeah, it'll, yeah I do have one, you and it's, have one it should week. be coming so out check about it out. Uh, 5 uh, o'clock in the morning is what I have it scheduled. So, uh, so you can get... You know, assuming the world, uh, you know, assuming Christ doesn't, doesn't come back. Doesn't return back, back hey. you know, that's right. In, in that case, there's something more important than Theology Thursday, you yeah, know, going we'll, on. We'll have so Theology yeah. every day. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And we won't care about this no. little podcast. <laughs> no, not anymore. And uh, we'll be we'll be yeah. praising the Lord. Yep. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, definitely watch that. Uh, the, the Tim's Theology Thursday is an awesome little uh, little side episodic content that we give yeah. on uh, Gospelicious Radio, uh, where Pastor Tim uh, uh, attempts to answer a user, a user, a viewer or listener submitted question. Uh, in five minutes or less. Mm-hmm. Uh, check that out. It's really cool. Uh, minor details is coming soon. I keep promising it's coming. It's coming. Oh, it's coming. Trust me, it's coming. I'm Looking working forward on, to I'm, it. I'm working on the uh, working on the intro stuff and the graphics as we speak. Praise God. And uh, thank you to Pastor Tim. He he put together a cool little intro yeah. for me. It's gonna be pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I enjoy it. It's you gonna know, be fun. You got it, buddy. So j- look forward to that. Hopefully, uh, I'm 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 hoping hoping in the next couple weeks or so. Amen. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Merch is here. Yes. We've got shirts. Yep, we got the shirts. Bam. Yep, we got the shirts there. I'll hold this one up one more time. Oh, yeah. We got coasters. We got stickers. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, which check I this have, out. This, yeah. their, their decals yep, are great for uh, decals tumblers there. and all kinds of cool Where stuff. Put them, I put them somewhere there, else. Yeah, Anyways, they're around. They're around. Yeah. Uh, so check that out. Uh, I think we're going to do a buck a piece on those. Yep. We're going to do 20 bucks for the shirts. Uh, it'll help cover the cost of the materials and the shirts, and then hopefully we can... Uh, uh, support the podcast with the leftover profits, Amen. Um, and also, um, you know, uh, as we've said before, any profits made by any of the merch will be used solely for the podcast right. or for any charitable cause that we will alert you guys of if and when that happens. Amen. Uh, it will not be used to purchase a PlayStation Four. Yes, as, as I keep saying, I, I know. Yes, <laughs> can you tell? Yeah. I kind of want a PlayStation Four. Yeah, I know you like yeah. the PlayStation Four. I, like I, I, I want a PlayStation Four. Just comes to mind. I don't know. Yeah, yeah you know, that's all right. Uh, but guys, find us on Facebook. Find us on Instagram, Amen. Twitter. Find our videos right here on YouTube if you're watching. Uh, audio versions of this podcast are on iTunes, Podomatic, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, where all your podcasts are offered. Amen. Subscribe to us. Like, like us. Please like us. Please like us. Please. <laughs> Please like us. <laughs> share us. Yes. Share. All that good stuff. Spread the gospelicious word. People. people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Spread the gospelicious Amen. word, people. Praise God. Guys, this is the end. Amen. Of episode 38. Thank you for joining us. Amen. We love you. Yes, we do. Until next time for Pastor Tim Howard. Amen. Happy painting and God bless, my friends. This is Adam Miner. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. All right. You got it. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Or a good day. Or a good day. (laughs)